The OpenSSL teams just released a security advisory discussing two high vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities are specific to X509 certificate verification and can be abused with, guess what? the email address that is in the certificate. How about we jump into it and discuss? So this was revealed around two weeks ago and it was initially labeled as critical, but then it was downgraded. The moment we get the, we got this and back in November 1st, so two days ago, we now know exactly how the OpenSSL bug can happen. Let's go for the first one first. X509 email address four byte buffer overflow. A buffer overrun can be triggered in X509 certificate verification, specifically in name constraint checking. So if you don't know, OpenSSL is a rich library that does everything TLS. You can generate private key, public key. You can generate Diffie-Hillman parameters. You can ver verify certificates. You use it for, we use it for to generate SSH keys, you know, put it in our GitHub repo and stuff like that, right? And you can also use it to verify that a certificate is actually valid. It goes to the certificate authority and, and verse. Well, that said, let's continue. Note that this occurs after certificate chain signature verification. So whatever this name constraint is, is what we're going to learn that this is in the email itself, only happens after the certificate has been verified successfully, which means how do you verify a certificate? It has to be valid. That means it has to be signed by some certificate authority that is trusted. And if that certificate authority is not trusted, whoever the parent must be trusted. This means it requires either a CA to have signed a malicious certificate or for the application to continue certificate verification despite failure to construct a path to a trusted issuer. Yeah, you know what we do usually in like in curl and other applications. So dash dash insecure. If the application is like, eh, I'm writing this, my application just works locally and I want to test and see HTTPS. Right, so I want to build an HTTPS, so I want to use a self-signed certificate. So we've usually built the backend with dash dash insecure. So Node or any other application, you can just disable certificate verification. And if you have that and accidentally pushed it to production, then the, obviously the certificate verification will pass and then that code will execute. And here's what happened. An attacker can craft a, a malicious email address to overflow four attacker controlled bytes on the stack. So this assumes that you have the email address is well known size, but somehow the attacker actually managed to insert an additional four bytes, I think. And these four bytes, when OpenSSL tries to copy it in order to run this name constraint checking, that is where the writing, these four bytes will be written into the stack. And unfortunately, it will cause a crash. Crashes are the worst because they cause what? Denial of service. Right? Can this cause a remote code execution? I suppose if the attacker, whoever wrote this certificate, who built the certificate with this malicious email address with those nasty four bytes, have those nasty four points points to a function in memory, in the server's memory in this case, and that function is controlled by the attacker, but what? that's very unlikely because that means the attacker also somehow has to paste that function in memory and know where does it exist in memory and have those four bytes point to it, I suppose, right? Uh, very unlikely in my opinion. I suppose that's why maybe they did downgrade it to, uh, from critical to high, but I might be wrong. So how do you actually execute it, right? If you think about it, if I am a, a malicious attacker, right, and I built this nasty certificate that has this nasty email address, this special email address with this additional four bytes. And then I got a certificate like Let's Encrypt to sign it for me. Nothing would stop Let's Encrypt from signing it to me. Anyone can sign anything with Let's Encrypt, right? Well, I suppose, I don't know if there is an API to sign a certificate, right? A ready certificate. Usually Let's Encrypt creates the certificate for you. You give them the DNS, and then they point back to like the cert bot and then they generate it. But don't do anything. If there's an API just to sign a certificate, all right. You have Let's Encrypt sign the certificate and all of a sudden, 
It's trusted. Right? Assume they verify the domain and all that. You now have a certificate that is trusted. All what you can do, host it on your own as an attacker, host it on your nasty server, you're an attacker. And then and any client that has the TLS client library that uses OpenSSL version 3.0 to 3.06, which has this bug, will download the certificate in order to verify it locally, right? And then the client will crash if they have these versions. I mean, yeah, you can crash clients, big deal. But then let's reverse it. Can, can I, as a client, as a nasty attacker, crash you, server, which happen to have an OpenSSL version 3.0 to 3.0.6? Let's think about it. If the attacker is the client and the server requires a client-side certificate, effectively mutual TLS, right, M MTLS, then the server, you connect to it, and then the server will say, hey, I, yeah, this is my certificate. The server is, is legit, right? And the certificate, and the server will send its certificate and it says, hey, by the way, I need your certificate, client, because I support mutual TLS. And you are the attacker in this case. What you do is generate that nasty certificate with the nasty email address, and then you send it to the server. And this way, only this way, you can crash a server that have OpenSSL 3.0 to 3.0.6. So what public facing web servers are don't normally ask for client certificates. So that's is not as dangerous. Microservices, I suppose, and service meshes all deal with like MTLS, right? So I suppose that is recommended to upgrade. But in other cases, is this dangerous? Eh, I suppose still high, but I can't think of a situation where this is absolutely dead. Like heart bleed, like, oh my God, heart bleed is bad, was bad. Heart bleed was a TLS extension, you know, to keep the connection alive because, you know, TLS is expensive, right? To establish the connection. And when you establish the connection, we want to keep it alive. So what instead of just using the TCP keep alive feature, the TLS itself also want to make sure that the connection is alive, right? So what they did is they built an extension. This extension literally says, hey, send me a byte and tell me the length of the byte and I'm going to reply back to that byte to you, making sure that I actually just heard you. So, hey, I'm alive, I'm alive. It's, a, it's called heartbeat. Oh, heartbeat, heartbeat. We said, right, it's, you, send it, you send it the content, the payload, and the length of this payload, right? So they know effectively just to reply back. Right? What, what the open source decision said is that actually the payload matches the length. So what's the problem with that? So I can, as a, as a malicious attacker, I can send you one byte, letter A, and, but I said 65,000, right? So what open source will do, okay, let me copy the payload to my memory, and then, oh, how long was, how, what's the length of this? He says 65,000, sure. Read 65,000 after A. <laughs> so we'll read everything in memory, and then just reply back to the server with 65 beautiful bytes from the server memory. So private keys and passwords, emails, anything pretty much in the email on the server will be just a could back to the client. Nasty bug. That's, that is a nasty bug. This, eh, I don't know. It requires a lot of work. Still dangerous. Like, don't get me wrong. Still dangerous, I think. But uh, I don't think it's, it's as dangerous, you know? The other attack is identical, except it's a variable length email, you know? If you put an email with a long length, but what you did is you started using a bunch of dots in that email, right? which will freak out OpenSSL. So just to be safe, of course, if you have version 3.0.0 to 3.0.6, it's always should upgrade to version 3.0.7 to fix these bugs, just to be safe, you know, peace of mind. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.